Denny Hamlin has joined us here in the Pocono Raceway Media Center. He drives the number 11 FedEx Ground Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing. Denny's certainly no stranger to this room. I believe he's been in here four times in the Sprint Cup Series. A lot. Been in here a lot. And uh, he's also driving in the, uh, driving in the uh, Camping World Truck Series race tomorrow. In fact, we were talking last night, and uh, some people I was talking to said they thought you had a pretty good chance of winning that race. But uh, I won't tell you who I heard that from. But uh, anyhow, Denny, before we get uh, started on, um, on our racing, I understand you have some, uh, some news you'd like to share with these folks. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, I've um, you know, been excited, uh, you know, for a little while. But I just want to let everyone know that uh, me and Jordan are expecting – um next january and excited about that it's been a long time coming so it's uh it's going to be exciting to be a dad well from somebody on experience nothing better than that trust me uh congratulations thank you congratulations so uh okay well we'll take questions uh, looks like the uh field the floor is open and we'll start here with claire on that note and congratulations Talk about your dad, talk about your thoughts about fatherhood and how you were raised and what kind of a dad you plan to be. Uh, hopefully half of what my dad was uh, would be good. Um, you know, my family has is, is done a lot for me to get to, get to this point, obviously, and just uh, all the sacrifices and all that they've gone through. And, you know, it's my dad tells me all the time some of the best times he had is just carrying around me in his pickup truck, you know, every day uh you know taking me to work with them things like that and so um it's uh it's going to be a great experience and so I, i'm you know really excited about it and and really uh just excited to be you know part of it and for my parents to you know have grandkids it's all it's all going to be good so it's uh yeah the, the everything works great uh things happen and uh, we're excited about the, you know, the timing is going to be in January, so it's the off season. So it's all that uh, seems to be aligning perfectly uh, for us. And so, you know, my parents and all live, uh, you know, a mile or two down the road, so they're going to get to visit all the time. And so, it's uh, it's going to be a great time over these next, uh, you know, six months to a year. Steve, have you guys um, set a uh, wedding date at all, or where's that stand? <laughs> Sorry to put you in a box there, but yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of personal, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, no, I mean, especially now that you know, all this is is going on, and uh, you, you know, you you want to be patient and everything, and and you know, I am 31, so I consider myself pretty patient if I haven't been married yet. So, um, you know, there's there's no reason to rush into it right now, especially with uh, everything that's going on. We you know, we, we've obviously, uh, you know, got a busy six months ahead of us. I waited till 50, so. Oh, okay. Is it because you couldn't, nobody would put up with you? Or yeah. Or? <laughs> Pretty much. Take him. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty At least much. you found someone. Yeah. <laughs> okay, question over here to the right, Jenny. Danny Skip Clayton, he said, I waited till I was 52 and a half till I got married. But, uh, well, you seem like a nice guy. I don't know. <laughs> I, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, well, <laughs> how many? <laughs> about 40. <laughs> Danny, uh, you were at the Eagles training camp. Can you talk about mm -hmm. your visit up there? I know your boss is a former Redskins coach, but. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, well, that was riding the Cowboys. It, it was a great experience. Uh, I, I'm, you know, uh, I'm a Michael Vick fan. Uh, he simply because he's from Virginia Tech and and I'm a huge Frank Beamer fan he's a guy who's always a uh, um, you know really admired him and so to go up to any kind of football camp is just uh, amazing I, I've been to Redskins I've been to Virginia Tech before uh, but the Eagles uh, was great all the strength and condition guys had tons of questions about you know what we go through um, how do we train and things like that and so it's uh, really been uh, a cool experience to go there and, and obviously help promote this race this weekend. Um, they look good. You know, for me to catch a pass from Michael Vick while Deshaun Jackson's screaming, don't don't miss it, don't miss it, um, you know, it was, was pretty cool. So uh, I my, tried kicking a field goal, and I thought that 30 yards would be simply a chip shot. We had to move way in, uh, and I still didn't make. So 
it's uh, I found something that you know, I'm pretty bad at. Then you got a lot of concussions in pro football. As NASCAR and pro football maybe getting together and comparing helmets and maybe they could cut them down a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, I can't swear to it, but I think Toyota has something to do with helmets and things like that. Um, I know that they're all working on that, and concussions was an issue over here and then there. It's always an issue, but um, I'm sure the technology is, is meshing back and forth. They're constantly changing both the foam in our helmets and the football helmets. So I'm sure that, um, trust me, it's getting back and forth. Other questions for Denny? Right back here on the right, and then we'll go to Bob. Let's get the gentleman there in the blue. Denny, uh, Keith Crawler from the Morning Call, a Tribune uh, newspaper. Just your thoughts on being back here again. We talked, I talked to you at the Eagles camp last week and, and asked you about this track and, and uh, you've had a lot of success here. You said it really hasn't changed even with the repave, it's still Pocono. But now that you're back here, do you see even some changes from when you were here in June? It, it's different, um, that's for sure. Um, I, I could just tell, you know, I, I asked, first thing I asked is that, you know, if Goodyear switched a tire, uh, they didn't. Uh, so the only thing we can think uh, that's making the cars feel different this time around is that we've got an extra half inch of side skirt cut off the car and it seems from my perspective that it's made the cars a little bit looser into the corner um, so we're having to adjust for that um, so that you know this track always changes you know I you know with each win that we've had here we've had completely different setups um, in the car so it, we constantly evolve those setups and we're gonna have to do it again this weekend um, and for what the first practice looked like it looked like our teammates were pretty good so we should head in that direction Go ahead, Bob. Uh, Bob Parker, Sporting News. Um, Amendinger got released from Penske this week, and that's now he's and he's obviously going through the recovery program. Uh, what do you think are his chances of, of getting back in a Cup car? And I mean, would you have any qualms racing around him? Uh, you know, I wouldn't. No, I, I think that you know NASCAR is not going to let him back unless they feel like he's 100% ready. Um, I think he'll be back in a Cup car. Uh, will it be a good cup car? I, I don't think so. Um, I, I think he'll you know get an opportunity, but it's not gonna. It's just so, so hard now. I mean, there when champions of our sport like Matt Kenseth can't find sponsors and things, it's uh, it's gonna be a real tough road um, to 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 get back to where you were. Um, he had a a really really good ride, um, obviously in that 22 car. Um, and it just takes it's just so hard now there's just <coughs> these companies are just not willing to take willing to take the risk like they used to um, much on, on a young driver much less someone with uh, a, a bad history um, so it, it's going to be a tough road but you know I'm sure we'll see him back in the cup series at some point any additional questions for Denny Bob has another one um, as far as the Michigan tire goes, you know, we heard last week or earlier this week that, you know, hey, it's all good. Of course, that's kind of what we heard after the April test. So what makes guys maybe more confident this time around than the last time? Well, I was there, and um, the tire that we're going to have is a lot better than what we had there um, <coughs> to race with, but not as good as what we had to practice with. Um, but you figured that they were going to be right in the – they were going to cut it right down the middle um, for what that what they wanted and, and what the reason I say that we're not going to have issues is that uh, looking at tire temperatures I know from the test what they were and then what they were at this test and they are you know 30 40 degrees cooler so I think that you're not going to see and the temperature was hotter so I think you won't see any tire blistering like you saw before plus the left side wear um, is virtually nothing where there was somewhere um, before so I think that uh, you know we'll have a pretty easy uh, race when we go back. Nate, has got one down here, Corrine. Uh, Nate Ryan, USA Today. Uh, Denny, with so many drivers becoming um, fathers, I guess in the last cu couple of years, uh, are you? Do you feel any more prepared for for fatherhood? We're all that drinking the same water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Prepared. 
<laughs> yeah. Did you get any tips, I guess, is what I'm asking? Or did you, did you look out in the motorhome lot and see things and think, yeah, maybe I can do that? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna learn as I go. I'm gonna have the training wheels on it to start, you know. But um, I'm sure now I'm gonna get all the advice I can handle. But I'm gonna just lean on my parents. I turned out just fine, other than my head's all messed up sometimes. Any other questions? Right here. <clears throat> Scott Walsh from the Scranton Times. Danny, can you talk about um, the practice in the, in the truck and what it's, you know, the difference running the truck uh, uh, on the new pavement as opposed to running the cup car on the new pavement? It's, um, it's quite a bit different. You drive the, the, the two vehicles a lot different. Um, yeah, I thought that I was a little disappointed with our, you know, with our practice. I, you know, we were middle of the pack, I guess you could say. Um, but, you know, I thought we were a top five to six truck. Uh, but you know that it's different. You know, I, I ran the truck race here a couple of years ago with Elliot, and when Casey and Elliot were in it, and uh, y the draft was really important then, and I think it's going to be even way more important now. So I think that you're going to treat it almost like a speedway race down the straightaway, in the sense of instead of choosing to pass every time you get to someone, you'll choose to push um, and, and make your passes. That's how. I, I don't know, you know, I thought that the 30 truck was head and shoulders above everyone, but the draft is so big and there's so much lap time in it that I think the two trucks could possibly draft past the, the best truck on the last lap. Any more questions? Okay. Uh, in the truck. When you get around another car, do you have the arrow push? Uh, what do trucks have that uh, they seem to be able to work better or, or do more with each other than the cup cars can do? Well, they just they don't have as much horsepower, um, and they have more drag, and, and they punch a bigger hole. So when you carry more throttle, um, it, uh, it makes the draft more um, evident. The aero push is worse in the trucks, but the reason that the racing is closer is because they punch such a huge hole in the air that they get the bigger run down the straightaway. So by the time they get to the next corner, they've all botched back up again. And so that's the difference. And, um, you know, at, at times you look at it and you say, man, the truck series, that kind of package is what the cup cars need. But I've been in nationwide races where, you know, they have the bigger holes that they punch in the air. And, I mean, they're – it's bad. So I think that, you know, where we're at with the Cup Series is good, but the trucks, I just think the trucks put on good racing simply because they are so boxy and so tall that the draft is important at every racetrack you go to. So no matter how bad your truck handles, you'll catch the next guy in the next by the end of the straightaway. And starts and restarts. We had a problem last weekend. What's your understanding of how to start a race, restart a race? Yeah, I mean, that's tough. I, I was – somewhat on Elliot's side on that thing you know what what does he do um but uh I, I think that everyone in the cup race I was up front uh quite a bit on those restarts everyone was very aware of of the lecture that we got in in, in the drivers meeting and I think that uh everyone made sure NASCAR had no question or or, or needed to question any, anything that anyone was doing so I think that uh I think it that kind of shock that they sent through on that driver's meeting is, is what is going to tame us down on restarts at least for the next month or so.